Good day, grade 10s. My name is Kaden Matsukere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. And I'd like to welcome you to lesson number 60 from my textbook, The Distinction Bound Student Grade 10. All right, um, in this lesson, we are going to talk about shifts of the demand curve. In the previous lesson, we talked about the demand schedule and uh, we, we, we showed you how a demand curve typically looks like. So in this lesson, we're going to move on uh, a step further because ultimately we want to show you how price is determined. But before you see how price is determined, we want you to know how a demand, a demand curve is uh, constructed from a dis demand schedule and uh, also the fact that the demand curve can shift either to the right or to the left. Uh, we may talk about factors that may lead uh, that to happening. All right, so in this lesson, uh, we're going to start as usual by revising homework from the previous lesson. So if you haven't watched lesson number 59, you might need to go back and watch that one uh, because that's basically where we start this whole thing of prices. And uh, I would say it doesn't matter what grade you are in, grade 11 or 12, you may still, this lesson is very, very important because it will help you understand many other things that you are doing in those uh, respective grades. Right, uh, let's get started. The first question was, list the five factors, uh, the five key elements in the demand and supply uh, model. Well, the first one will be the demand curve. Uh, the second one will be the supply curve. And then we have the set, the set of factors that cause demand to shift and also on the same point, this uh, set of factors that cause supply to shift, yes. Uh, the next one will be market equilibrium, uh, which includes the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. Then the last one will be the way, um, the, 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 what can I say? The, the way the market equilibrium changes due to the shifts. Uh, as you notice, is uh, the market equilibrium as in the price, let me start with that. It can increase, it can decrease. And also the market equilibrium, the other one, which is quantity, it can also increase, it can also decrease. And right, moving on to the next question, what determines the quantity of goods and services that consumers want to buy? Well, there may be a couple of factors that could determine, but uh, the one that I would I was looking for here will be price. Of course, we have other factors that can lead to an increase in demand um, or, or, or the quantity demanded for a good. Uh, and I'm currently thinking about something which is going on right now. Uh, in some cases, it may be mandatory, let me say, for, uh, for consumers to consume a certain good. For instance, currently, uh, this is 2021, uh, we are all required to wear masks okay so demand for masks then in that case is not determined by the price uh it's actually de determined by the law which says uh you may not enter any shop you may not leave your house without one and so on okay but uh the answer i was looking for here would be price of course i'm saying we have other factors the next one define the phrase demand schedule well, a demand schedule is a table, basically it is, okay, which has numbers, right? So a demand schedule is a table showing how much uh, of a good or service consumers will want to buy at different prices. So basically that's it. You saw it in the previous lesson. We had a demand schedule for coffee beans. And yes, uh, we had a set of numbers uh, showing the different price levels for coffee beans and the different um, quantities demanded in kilograms, yes, uh, for those coffee beans. So basically that's what a demand schedule is. And from that, we can, demand, we can construct a demand curve. The next question, what does a demand, uh, what does a downward sloping demand curve uh, represent? Well, a, a, a demand curve basically is, oh no, I'm reading the wrong question, eh? because the next question, I, I knew that soon after demand schedule, uh, I asked about the demand curve. So I was reading number five uh, instead of number four. So number four is what is a demand curve? 
Well, I, I would rather say a demand curve then is a graphical representation of a demand schedule. Okay. Uh, so what does a downward sloping demand curve represent? Well, a downward sloping uh, demand curve would represent that um, as, as quantity increases, price decreases or the other way around as price decreases quantity demanded will increase yes that's what it represents the next question is it always the case that the demand curve is downward sloping substantiate your answer well the answer i'll be looking for there is no uh, the reason is we have some extreme or cases where a demand curve can be kinked like in case of an oligopoly well uh, that concept has not been uh, what introduced to you in grade 10 yet uh, but yes look we do this topic soon after uh, those market structures so yes you know what an oligopoly is its demand curve is kinked and you also wrote that in your notes that the demand curve is kinked but maybe one thing you didn't do or haven't done is uh, showing you exactly how it is kinked so there are cases where the demand curve can be kinked and also there are cases where a demand curve can be horizontal in other words the demand curve that we are showing you there uh, in most cases the one that we normally draw will be one that is unitary elastic uh, which yes is downward sloping uh, we have one that can be relatively elastic we have one that can be uh, relatively inelastic and then we have two other extreme cases where a demand curve can be perfectly inelastic. So that one is vertical. We can't really say it's downward sloping, it's vertical. And then we have another one, which is another extreme case where a demand curve can be perfectly elastic. And that one is horizontal. So uh, I'd say no to, to that question, number six, and uh, I've substantiated my answer quite well. Well, the last one define the phrase uh, ceteris, uh, some pronounce it as ceteris paribus. Well, ceteris paribus is simply a phrase that simply means uh, all other things equal or, other, or, or all other things constant. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of today's uh, activity. And as usual, I always put the answers as well. Oh, I see here something is wrong. I made a mistake. I'm not sure if I the same mistake is there in the book because I'm noticing it now that my answers here do not by any chance go along with the questions. Okay, I'll have a look and see what happened. But uh, I gave you the answers anyways. So yeah, you can you can mark yourself using what I was saying. Uh, you, you might need to go back and uh, listen again to my answers, write them down, whatever the case is, because normally I'll say pause, mark yourself and let's move on. So like here, you cannot pause and mark anything because I don't even, uh, you know, understand what happened. But sorry for that. Right, moving on to the lesson of the day, uh, we are still in unit five and today's lesson is lesson number 60, as I've already said. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about the shift of the demand curve. Last lesson, we introduced you to a demand curve, which we constructed from a demand schedule. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the same demand curve and simply shift it. And uh, yeah, you'll see a couple of factors that may cause the demand curve to shift. So let's get down into it. So even though coffee prices were a lot higher in 2006, well, I'm going to show you a demand schedule for a different year, which is 2006, than they were in 2005. And the 2005 one is the one that we, uh, 2001 and two, sorry, is the one that we used in the previous lesson. Like I said, it's the same one that we're going to use. But now we want to look at the demand curve for 2002 and the demand curve for 2006. However, prices changed yes we all know that uh, in 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 the long term prices tend to go up due to so many factors and we call that uh, inflation which is a general increase in the level of prices so how can we reconcile the fact that we have already uh, talked about in the previous lesson uh, with the law of demand which actually says that a higher price reduces quantity demanded well, all other things 
equal uh, and and the phrase which we which i asked you just now in the pre in the homework from the previous lesson was the term ceteris paribus so how do we basically reconcile this fact because here we are saying um, even though coffee prices uh, were a lot higher than in 2006 than they were in 2002, total world consumption of coffee was higher, meaning uh, demand for coffee increased in 2006, but prices were higher, which sort of contradicts what we say about the law of demand, which says as price goes up, quantity demanded, it decreases. Well, I think um, the answer will lie on the phrase ceteris paribus or or other things being equal uh, because mm, other, all other things were not equal. Uh, the world had changed from 2002 to 2006 and so many things happened in ways that increased the quantity of coffee demanded at any given price. So basically for one thing, the world population and therefore the number of potential coffee drinkers increased. So do you notice that the increase here is not being caused by the price? So that law applies if we put the phrase ceteris paribus because uh, the, the, the basic rule or the basic law of demand will state that as price increases, quantity demanded decreases. As price decreases, quantity demanded increases. But then we put that phrase ceteris paribus, meaning all other things equal. Now, see, if we don't keep other things equal, uh, this law may not make sense in some cases. I'm thinking of right now about what we're going through with COVID-19, and I might need to use the same thing of, uh, okay, let me change. Uh, let me talk about something like lemons. Uh, basically, if you look at, if you go to supermarkets and check the price of lemons, uh, they've basically, they've gone up, uh, mainly because, um, of, of the pandemic and other things that people believe that, oh yeah, we must take things with lemons. We must drink tea with lemon. And so we must start consuming that because, Apparently, it helps with uh, COVID. So you'll notice that uh, even though the price of lemons may have gone up, quantity demanded may still increase because other things are not constant. There's something that has happened. But if we had to keep all other things equal, you would notice that the law will apply or the law will work. I don't know if you get me. Okay. Right, so in addition, the growing population, uh, popularity of different types of uh, coffee beverages or uh, like lattes and cappuccinos led to an increase in the quantity demanded at any given price. So yeah, there's this uh, trend nowadays. Uh, people just go out to chill at restaurants and they may, and with social media also, yeah, I was drinking a cappuccino, this and that. So certain things have changed and it's not the same. Okay. Even now, if I was to construct one uh, again, okay, look, we have one for 2002, one for 2006. If I was to construct one for 2021, you'll still see that there's an, there's another shift from where it was in 2001, even though if we were to compare prices for 2006 or two with 2021, we are going to see that prices are way higher in 2021 than they were in 2006 and even 2001. But how come demand increased? Well, all other things were not equal population increased and this increase in popularity of these different coffee beverages may also be a reason. So the diagram that I'm going to show you uh, very soon illustrates the phenomenon uh, using the demand schedule and the demand curve for coffee beans. As before, the numbers here are hypothetical, meaning uh, I'm making these numbers up just for, and basically they make sense if you look at them. So the table in the diagram shows two demand schedules like I've already said. The first demand schedule will be for 2002 
the same one that we saw in the previous lesson and then the second one is a new one uh, which will typically show an increase in numbers so it differs from 2002's demand schedule due to the factors such as large population and greater popularity of lattes cappuccinos and stuff factors that led to an increase in the quantity of coffee beans demanded at any given price so we are going to use the same prices uh, that we had for 2002 and see for 2006 how many coffee beans would be demanded at each price i think the the, the highest price there was 20 rand if i'm not mistaken so at each price the 2006 schedule shows a larger quantity demanded than the 2002 schedule okay so here let's have a look uh, i'm going to select a pen let me take purple okay i'm always taking purple so okay what let me take red all right so here uh, and a pointer let me start with a pointer okay so here we are having the prices so this is the price in rents for coffee beans per kilogram so we have 20 rand per kg 17 rand 50 15 rand 12 rand 10 rand 7 rand 50 and 5 rand so if you may remember these are the same prices that we had in the previous lesson then this is uh 2002 so what this means basically is in 2002 eight kilograms no eight let me see quantity demanded for coffee beans okay in billions of kgs so eight billion kgs were demanded in the whole um would be demanded in 2002 if coffee beans were 20 rand per kg basically you understand that now if the price was to drop yes more would be demanded which basically explains the law but obvious all other things equal okay so then 15 uh, rand 9 billion kgs will be demanded the whole year at 12 rand 9.5 billion at 10 rand 10 billion like that like that up until 11 billion at 5 rand per kg well do you notice that if we compare 2002 with 2009 at the same price of 20 rand 9 billion kgs would be demanded in a whole year at the same price okay so it shows that more will be demanded and uh basically there can be many factors that could have led to this increase like i said already it could be because of um an increase in popularity for these uh cafe uh, caffeinated uh beverages and also it could be an increase in population so yeah as you can see this goes up this goes up this goes up so each and every um different price will give us a higher quantity demanded in 2006 as compared to what was being uh, demanded in 2002 so how do we construct a graph so basically think about the same one that we had in the previous lesson and then we are simply going to shift it but you see that we are not just shifting it we are going to make use of these numbers basically you know how a demand schedule will be uh, converted into a demand curve like we defined a demand curve as a graphical representation of a demand uh, a demand schedule okay so this is the one that we had in 2002 or in the previous lesson so this is the demand curve for 2002 and these numbers are coming from this one uh, like i did let me show you okay so we have 20 rand which is this 20 rand here and at 20 rand how many eight um eight billion kgs and which is here see eight billion kgs okay so you can see that this goes along with that and this is the price okay now let's take the same 20 rand this one and uh so for 2002 it will be this dot here so let's go to 2006 for the same price of 20 rand well for that price it goes along with this nine you see here nine billion cages and if we go up straight do you notice that it takes us to 20 here okay so it will be this dot here 
okay so basically uh for the same price this will be 2002 and this will be 2006. i think this is clear to understand and i'm back to the pointer and uh so here is 17 this is the 17 and for that 17 we have 8.5 this is the 8.5 so it goes with this dot then for the same 17 rand 50 we have this 9.5 which is this dot it goes along you see with this 1750 uh if you want me to draw it then i might take a different one let me just do on this one so this 17 is the 17 we are looking at here and this 8.5 will be uh this 8.5 here and that 8.5 takes us to this dot right here and the same 17 will give us this 9.5 and so let me go to this 9.5 and go up up yes this that so it takes us to this dot here okay do you notice that this let me get back to the pointer this dot shifts to that one this to that so this to that this to that like that like that so if we were to construct another demand uh, curve for 2006 using the demand schedule for 2006 then we are going to see a shift a rightward shift of the demand curve from the blue demand curve to the black demand curve and the dots corresponding i think this is clear okay let let me just go to the last one just uh for more clarity this five rand will be this five rand and it tallies with this 11 which is this one and so if we go this way you see that we have this dot for five rand and we have this 12 which is this 12 here and we go up we go there it will be this one okay so i think this is not rocket science so basically it's something like this we have a demand curve then it shifts it shifts then we have a new one right there okay so we call this the shifting of a demand curve now you'll see okay later i'll be talking about it later where i'm comparing a shifting of a demand curve and movement along the demand curve basically i'll show you just now all right so i think this is clear so uh we're going on ahead to explain but you have seen uh, this is the same explanation what i was explaining is being written here so you may need to pause write down these notes or whatever you want but this is exactly what i was explaining so what is clear from this example is that the changes that occurred be between 2002 and 2006 generated a new demand schedule, one in which quantity demanded was greater at any given price than the original demand schedule. So the two curves in the graph above uh, show the same information graphically. As you can see, the demand schedule for 2006 corresponds to the new demand curve D1 uh that um d1 that is to the right of the demand schedule for 2002 which is d this change in demand shows an increase in quantity demanded at any given price represented by the shift in the position of the original demand curve d uh, to its new location d1 it's crucial to make the distinction between such changes in demand and movements along the demand curve changes in the quantity demanded of a good that result from a change in the in that uh, goods price all right then let me now explain uh, what do you call it um, movement along the demand curve as opposed to shifting of a demand curve so from point a to point c this will represent a shifting you see here shifting of a demand curve this here will represent movement along the demand curve so what could cause a demand curve to shift well if we talk about um the the example that i used in the previous lesson which is uh the one for coffee beans uh the 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 the, the, the demand curve shifted because of an increase in population the demand curve shifted because of an increase in the popularity for 
uh, cafe uh, beverages okay like uh, cappuccinos lattes and all those other fancy ones the americanos the whatever espresso so all those things so that will cause a shift of the demand curve now what causes a movement along the demand curve well a movement along the demand curve then will be caused by a change in price do you notice that here price remaining 20 rand quantity demanded can increase so what is causing quantity demanded to increase here it's other things okay now hold other things constant and change the price from 20 rand to 12 rand 50. what you are going to notice is demand for coffee is going to increase from 8 billion kgs to 9.5 billion kgs if you were to decrease the price from 20 to 12 rand 50 and keep all other things constant don't forget that part Okay, what if the price would drop to 17? Well, to 17, it will be somewhere here. So that will be 8.5 billion cages. What if the price was to drop to 5 rand? Well, it would be 11 billion cages. So basically, uh, that's it. Let me see here. The rise in the quantity demanded when uh, going from point A to point B reflects movement along the demand curve. It is a result of a fall in the price of the good. The rise in the quantity demanded when going from point A to point C reflects a change in demand. This shift to the right is the result of a rise in the quantity demanded at any given price. So from 17, it will shift from 8.5 to 9.5. Okay, like that. So going down, going down like that. So both demand curves will be down or sloping. Uh, apply each one applying the law of demand yes and uh, basically the shifting then shows that there may be something some other thing that is causing it which is not price related because why would demand increase from here to that okay let's say let's say another one that i'm thinking of right now uh the price of a jersey is 20 rand or jerseys uh, jerseys or jackets let me say that because yeah may not be pronouncing it properly okay the price of jackets is 20 rand and we demand eight uh, of them eight jackets now if the month would change and we move from oh the season let me say uh we move from uh, summer to winter well you'll notice that even though the price of jackets remain 20 rand we are going to you know consume more because other things are not constant the the weather has changed so what's really causing people to wear or buy more jerseys or demand more jackets will be the fact that it's cold you see it has nothing to do with the price i think you get it okay but okay let me let me talk about something else here but if price was to change and drop to 17 rand 50 8.5 jackets would be demanded at that lower price however if the price would drop and the season would change so it won't be 8.5 it will go up to even 9.5 where i put my pointer there i think you get this okay if you want gay okay, let me use a pen what i'm saying is if price would drop to 50 to 17 50 what do you think would happen okay the first thing that will happen is would have this point here okay going down it will be corresponding with this 8.5 okay what if yes the price has dropped to 17 50 and another factor is in place which is it's cold then what will actually happen is we'll have a point here which will correspond with what with 9.5 i think it's clear all right so this will be the end and uh, it's just uh, a couple of explanations on uh, this graph yes the diagram illustrates i've been telling you this so i might just go to the conclusion which in this case would be um here 
no 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 this will be the conclusion so when economists talk about a change in demand saying that um the demand for x increased or the demand for y decreased they mean that demand curve for x or y shifted are we clear there so when we say uh, when we talk about a change in demand we are referring to a shifting of a demand curve please point get that clear not that quantity demanded increased or decreased so when we say there's a change in demand we are not saying quantity demanded increased or decreased we are simply saying the demand has the demand curve has shifted so basically what i'm saying is this goes along with this a shifting of a demand curve from d to d1 okay then this goes along with this a movement along the same demand curve okay which is the same demand curve d all right so if there are questions yes you know what you need to do uh that's why we have a comment section go to the comment section like the video subscribe to the channel and uh, i think uh that's that so the last thing will be do this homework and we are going to start by revising the homework in the next lesson okay I, I don't know if i'll do it the way i did it in this lesson or i'll just show you then you mark yourself i'm going to decide all right as usual subscribe to the channel please like and thank you so much god bless